It's an accident locals like me remember well. And it's one we'll never forget. Only a 40 minute drive from where I'm sitting right now, I still get the chills as I go over that same curve where it all happened. Thinking about what happened, or what could have happened, where the deadliest accident on the Northeastern Corridor since 1987 occurred. And three years later, people still talk about this crash. This is the story of Amtrak 188. On May 12, 2015, Amtrak Regional 188 was running between Boston to Washington, D.C. The train had seven AM fleet cars being led by ACS 64 601, which was only a year old at the time and one of the first ACS 64s Amtrak received. 32 year old Brandon Bosnian was the engineer that day and had worked on the route for a few weeks now. It departed 30th Street Station at around 9.10 p.m., with its next stop, Trenton. However, further down the line, there was trouble. A SEPTA train was reporting a shattered windshield after some people threw some rocks at the lead car, blinding the engineer. The radio transmissions distracted the engineer for a brief moment when he listened into the SEPTA train calling for help. This made him believe he was further down the track, past the curb, so he sped his train up to 106 miles an hour, instead of the 80 mile per hour approach speed. What he didn't know was he hadn't even hit the curve yet. The speed limit of approaching the curve was around 80 miles an hour, with a 50 mile per hour speed limit within the curve. When he finally realized this mistake, he threw his train into emergency braking, but it was too late. The locomotive began to tip and left the curve at over 100 miles an hour. The Amfleets tumbled behind and some of them ripped apart from the excessive speed as they came off the tracks. Catenary wires were also damaged when the rear pantograph locks the connection to the wire and was flung clean off the roof of the engine. Finally, after the roar of the crash subsided and a barrage of 911 calls, rescuers were on the way. When they arrived, some of the lightly and unhurt passengers when they arrived on the scene, some of the lightly injured and unhurt passengers helped haul away the more seriously injured passengers. Brandon Bossian suffered a concussion after his head slammed into the dashboard of the locomotive. Maybe airbags should be put into the cabs in the future. Philadelphia Mayor Michael Nutter said that the wreck was an absolute disastrous mess and he was very stunned at how many people were able to walk away from such a violent impact. Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf said that anything that the state can do, we stand ready to do that, to help out those victims. Amtrak was deeply saddened by the loss of life from the accident and President Barack Obama even gave his condolences after the wreck saying that he and Michelle were shocked and deeply saddened to hear, and their thoughts and prayers going to their families. In the end, eight people died, and over 200 were injured, 
It was the deadliest accident on the Northeastern Corridor since the 1987 Chase, Maryland incident. Then there's the question, how can this happen, and why? And well, when Brandon Boston heard the SEPTA train call in, he literally lost all situational awareness of his location, almost like he was lost. He thought he was past the curve at an area such as Croydon, where trains increased their speed to 105 miles an hour, as seen here. Brendan Bostian's lawyer and Bostian himself even stated that he knew very little about what happened before the crash leading up to the impact thanks to that nasty concussion he sustained when his head hit the dashboard, which would have been like a head-on collision with a car in the passenger seat without working airbags. Unlike previously discussed crashes, Bostian wasn't on drugs, wasn't an alcoholic, or had any terroristic or suicidal intent. Heck, he wasn't even using his phone or staring at trespassers or the occasional foamer. <clears throat> he simply just forgot where he was. And some say 601 was possibly hit by rocks before the crash, but most likely those were loose ballast rock flying right into the engine's nose as it derailed and plowed off the tracks. Not to mention, this isn't a first time a train derailed by this spot. In 1943, Pennsylvania Railroad Congressional Limited derailed nearby the very spot 188 crash when a hot box occurred on the seventh car of the train, derailing all the cars behind. That wreck killed 79 and injured 117. Time to tackle the elephant in the room now that is still subject of debate today. It's been argued that the curb should have been equipped with positive train control, which works a lot like the train protection and warning system used in the UK. It uses GPS to know where a train currently is, where it's going, and how fast it's going, which is sent to the local dispatch center, in this case, CETC, or CTEC, located at 30th Street Station. When it detects the train is either approaching a red signal, going too fast past a yellow, at risk of colliding with another train, possibly a runaway with no engineering control, or if the train is about to hit misaligned switches switched against a train's path, it gives advanced warning to the engineer, usually heard by a series of beeps like this. This will give time for the engineer to react accordingly, but after a set amount of time, usually 10 to 30 seconds, the train automatically goes into full emergency, stops where it's at, and locks the controls unless it's reset. The deadline for such a system to be installed was at the end of 2015, according to Congress. Yes, it should have been a little sooner. As a result, PTC was mandated on all Amtrak lines, and all the ACS-64s were cleared first. The P-42s usually used on the Pennsylvanians, however, had to wait a little longer before being cleared for the system, so ACS-64s would have to tow them between Harrisburg and Philly. And funny enough, Phase 3 Heritage Unit 145 was one of the first P-42s to be cleared for that line. SEPTA was also hell-bent on positive train control since the crash, and became one of, if not the first commuter railroad to have positive train control on all their lines, with the Warmester Line being first on April 18th, 2016, until finally the Wilmington Newark, Trenton, and Paoli Thorndale lines all shared by Amtrak being the last ones to complete positive train control on May 1st, 2017. My line, the Maniac Norristown, had PTC fully installed by August 15th, 2016. Positive train control would have likely prevented this crash, although to this day it is still debated, even among rail fans like myself. In the end, ACS 64601, which was thought to have been put away for repairs, as stated in one of my older videos, but now it's been confirmed it 601 was deemed damaged beyond repair. It will serve as a source of spare parts for now, for anything that's still intact in the unit, alongside 627, which was also deemed too damaged to fix after hitting a backhoe in Chester a year later. Amtrak had to settle plaintiffs and punitive damages to victims valued at over $200 million. Wow. Brandon Boston, however, wouldn't face criminal charges according to Philadelphia prosecutors who said this on May 9th, 2017.
But last year, on the second anniversary of the crash, May 12th, 2017, Bastian turned himself in and was arrested, and prosecutors presented various charges against Bastian. These included involuntary manslaughter and reckless endangerment. However, on September 12, 2017, Philadelphia Judge Thomas Garrett dismissed all criminal charges, much to the frustration of prosecutors, victims, their families, and even locals. But this wasn't the end of the story. On February 6th of this year, after an appeal by PA's Attorney General's office, the case was reopened and the same charges were brought against Boston again. And we still do not know what the ruling is so far. It's been three years since this crash, but some rail agencies are still struggling to install positive train control due to its cost and complexity, including New Jersey Transit, who is already in enough financial trouble with the lack of cars, leasing mark coaches, and the lack of funding. Thanks, Christy. Amtrak even threatened to ban service from New York to Trenton on Amtrak trackage if they didn't get PTC installed on a certain date. And they're still struggling to do that as of February 16th, 2018. That's without mentioning the Hoboken incident that happened not too long ago. I still get the chills as I go over that same curve where it all happened, even on a SEPTA train. But knowing the lesson, but knowing the lessons we finally learned after this incident, we hopefully shouldn't see another crash like this. On May 12, 2015, Amtrak Regional 188 was running between Boston to Washington, D.C. The train had seven Amfleet cars being led by ACS 64 601, which was only a year old. Man, this traffic! And it's only like 10 at night. Who was the scapegoat? Definitely not Asriel. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it, I'm thinking about Undertale now. This is what happens when you have a new fandom that your girlfriend has introduced you for introduced you to for over a year now take full control of you. Even though real fanning still reigns supreme in me. <laughs> Alright.